Hey y'all, my name is Katie Rince and I'm the teams coordinator here at Dustable Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience. If this is your first time joining us, please head over to the connection cards tab, either on the app, the website, or the link below and let us know. We want to keep you updated on all things that is going on here at Dustable Church and just give you a big thank you for joining us. Also, if you've been calling Decibel Church your home and you have been giving faithfully, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It is because of your generosity that we get to have this online worship experience. And so we thought it was so important to make sure that you could continue to give faithfully. And so you can do that through our giving tab, either on the app or the website. Now let's lean in to what God has for us and let's join worship. I've spent beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I met you, I was breathing the night.
breakfast this morning. The way to change us from death to life. From the old man to the new man. From the old creature to the new creature. And Father, we thank you for that way that you made. I'll never forget the cross of Calvary. No wonder we call him Savior. No wonder we call him Lord. Come on, what an amazing song of hope. In the world is kind of uncertain and unknown. Man, I want to tell you, God is moving. My name is Shane Olson. I want to welcome you to the Decibel Online Campus. We are so excited to be worshiping with you. In just a couple moments, I'm going to drop in to the second part of a series that I started last week entitled Stepping into the unknown. Man, there's so much in front of us. Everywhere I go, I hear conversations. I don't know what's going to happen. What about this? Everyone's speculating. Well, I want to tell you, we can step into the unknown with assurance that God is on our side if we follow his game plan. And today, I want to give you a step of his game plan. Before I jump into that, I, want to, I just want to challenge you for a second. Man, there is a niece, a nephew, a grandfather, a grandmother, a friend, a spouse that you really are hoping engages the gospel. The gospel has never been more accessible than it is right now. And when you simply like and share all the posts from Decibel Church, you're going to push the gospel further, faster than it's ever went before. And that niece or nephew, that grandparent, that mom, dad, that spouse that you've been praying for for a long time, when you like and share that post, that may just be the week that they tune in to an online service and choose to accept Jesus Christ. Now, I know there's some people watching today. You're like, what is all this about? Hey, I just want to invite you to come into the conversation. Dive in today with me because I give you permission. You can sit here and you can watch and you can, you can belong to this community before you believe in Jesus. We'll give you that, that space and that, that arena to just ask honest questions and lean into what God may be doing in your life. Now, today I want to start with a story, if you don't mind. I'm a storyteller. I don't know why I always tell a story. But I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I remember learning riding a bicycle. I'm, I mean, like I, I remember all my friends out riding their bicycles, jumping curbs and jumping ramps. And man, I remember building a ramp and jumping the ramp. And, and I remember all of that vividly. And I remember the, the desire in my heart. I wanted to ride a bike, and I got focused on riding a bicycle. I said, I don't care what's going on. I don't care who's doing what. I am going to learn to ride a bicycle. And I set my eyes on it. And I'm from the generation that we had metal pedals. Oh, yeah, come on, metal pedal generation. Where you at? You know I'm talking to you, metal pedal generation. This generation doesn't know about metal pedals. They got these little plastic pedals that break. The only thing that breaks when you had a metal pedal is your shin and the, the cut that those little teeth would put right there on your shin. Come on, metal pedal generation. Go ahead and show your scars to the people sitting around you. Go ahead and point to your shin and tell them how you learned how to ride a bicycle that cost you something you didn't wear a helmet you didn't wear the knee pads and you had metal pedals that's where I grew up and I remember you being committed I, I'm gonna learn to ride this bicycle I remember all of a sudden learning to ride and the first time the pedal hit my shin and I wanted to give up 
but I wasn't giving up because there was something out there that was for me. There was, there was something that I wanted to experience. I wanted to jump the curb. I wanted to jump the ramp. I wanted to go down to the trails with my friends. And so I was dedicated and committed. I was going to, I was going to learn to ride a bike. And I would pester my parents, get out here. Come on, hold this seat, push me. And, and my mom, she would chase behind me and she would let go. My dad let go one time, ran me right into a thorn bush. We ain't going to talk about that and I went back to my mom mom come on you do this better than dad one day I learned to ride bike one day all of a sudden I was on my own two wheels and in the the free wind in my hair you know what I'm saying and I started learning to pop curbs and and jump ramps and I went down to the trails and the experience happened because I got focused on something I began to set my eyes to something and I began to say hey you know what I'm going to do this even if it costs me a little pain, even if I'm a metal pedal generation and I might get some, some scars on my shins, I'm going to do this because the experience on the inside is going to be worth it. And today, I want to lean in to a thought. We're going to jump in to a series today entitled Stepping Into the Unknown. And I want to invite you to join in this with me. I want you to take a step because I feel like this is where a lot of us feel like we're at right now. I feel like a lot of us are, are sitting here and we're leaning in and we're going, I don't know how this plays out. I don't know what this looks like. And I want to tell you that God has a plan. And we're going to look at a man's life named Gideon. Gideon I love Gideon in the Bible. He is in the season of judges. And, and what's happening is, is Israel, time and time again, is kind of falling away from God, and they're, they're experiencing the consequences of that. And in this particular story, so the Israelites have, have literally been tormented for seven plus years from a, a group of people called the Midianites. And um, the Midianites would literally, they were raiders. They would come into their villages. They would take all their, their livestock. So there goes the, the, all the sheep. There goes all the goats. There goes all the cattle. Like they, they would come in and they would take them. And for seven years, this had been going on. It, it literally got to a place where they had no livestock and no produce. And so when we chime in, I want you to realize that Gideon is, is in this place where he has nothing. He, 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 is, he is in the unknown, the uncertainty, kind of like we are right now. When he goes to the grocery store, all the shelves are bare. And, and thank God we're not going through that. But he is at that stage in life, and he begins to hear from God. You see, when we are in uncertain and unknown times, I want you to know God is not silent. God is pushing us and he's beginning to call us into a deeper purpose so with that being said I want us to look at Judges chapter 6 and we're going to look at verses 11 through 16 go ahead and get your Bibles out Judges chapter 6 verses 11 through 16 and we're going to check catch up with Gideon and this is what Gideon has to say and this is where we catch up and it says Gideon the son of Joash was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, um, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't? They say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and has handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, how can I? rescue Israel. My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I'm the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. And you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Come on. 
I think Gideon is going to speak a little bit to us today. I think the life of Gideon, this moment in the scriptures, Gideon is getting ready to have some words for us. How, how about we just lean into the life of Gideon for a couple minutes and we let the life of Gideon and this story begin to speak to us and challenge us today? Because I think if we lean into the life of Gideon, Gideon is going to tell us something pretty important. I think you know what Gideon's going to tell us? I think Gideon's going to tell us your focus matters. Your focus matters. You see, Gideon, Gideon had had all sorts of stuff going on around him, right? So when, when we read that text, it started with Gideon sitting there in the wine press. It says he was, he was, he was working on his wheat in the wine press, but here's the deal. You cannot separate wheat from the chaff in the wine press. You see, the only way to separate the wheat from the chaff was to go out on the hill where the wind was blowing, and you would let the wind begin to separate the wheat from the chaff. And so in that moment, Gideon is so scared He is so focused on himself, his family, that he's doing whatever he can to kind of make a meal and bring it all together and say, hey, hey, this is the plan. I've got this little bit and I'm going to hold on to this little bit. I'm going to hold on to this last roll of toilet paper. Everyone's getting one square toilet paper. I'm just going to hold on because I don't know what tomorrow may bring. And in that moment, God begins to speak to Gideon. I I love Gideon's response. He says, sir, he's a respectful man. Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Sir, if you're with us, God, if you're with us, why is this going on? God, if you're with us, why is this all happening? God, if you're with us, what in the world is going on right now in our world? If you're with us, what in the world? You see, Gideon was focused on his circumstances. At this point in the story, Gideon's saying, hey, I don't like what's going on to me. Gideon is sitting here, he's living a little bit of a a selfish life, and God's saying, hey, wait, Gideon, I realize you're holding on to your wheat. You're looking at that last square of toilet paper. I realize, Gideon, it's not going the way you want it to go, but I'm telling you, if you get your focus in line, if you get your perspective in line, I'm calling you to purpose. Because what's God say to him? God says, go with the strength you have. There's something in you. There's a strength inside of you. And he says, I'm going to do something with you. What am I going to do? I'm going to rescue Israel from the Mennonites. And guess what, Gideon? You're my plan. You're my plan. You're my plan A, and there is no plan B. Gideon, I am sending you. And I think that's exactly what God's saying to us today. In a world in the unknown, when, when, when there's such uncertain times, I think God's looking at us and he's saying, I am sending you. See, so you either focus on your circumstance, you can get so caught up in all the hype around the toilet paper, you can be scouring the town for the last roll of toilet paper, or you can begin to say, hey, God has a plan. God has a purpose in this, and I'm going to serve my neighbor. I'm going to engage the community. I'm going to love the people around me in a way that's never been seen or felt before. You see, when I look at Gideon's life, I begin to see a man that walked in some uncertain times. He began to wrestle some uncertain times, but I also see a man in his uncertainty, God begins to call out. God begins to speak to him in a direct way and says, hey, hold on, put the weed aside because I'm calling you to make a difference in a season in the unknown. And here's what I need you to realize. God is calling you to purpose. God's calling you to purpose. He, 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 in, in the midst of this COVID-19 
pandemic, in the midst of all that's going on, God hasn't forgot about you. God hasn't turned his head away from you. God is looking right at you going, this is the greatest moment for the church, the body of Christ to shine in a way that they've never seen before. We can, either, we can either shut our front doors and lock it or we can begin to find creative ways to love our neighbor, reach out to our neighbor, minister to our neighbor in a way that will grasp their heart and their soul. When I begin to think about that, my own personal emotions begin to go, God, how, how do we do this? How in the world can, can Decibel Church do this? How can I, as a follower of Jesus, do this? It becomes overwhelming. And, and when I think of it being overwhelming, I think that Gideon had the same emotion. You see, he was sitting there, and all of a sudden, he's like, whoa, whoa, wait, God. You're telling me to step out in purpose. I don't think you know who I am. You see, Gideon says this right here. He says, how can I rescue Israel? How, how, how can I do this? He says, my clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, in, in, the, in the weakest tribe of Manasseh, the, the weak tribe, the, 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 the team that always finished last in the softball tournament. Like, like, I'm telling you, I'm the last of them. He says, and I'm the least of my entire family. He says, basically what he leans into God and says, he says, remember God, um, right here, remember this? Um, in case you didn't know, when everyone goes out to play kickball on the playground, when they line up, I'm the last one to get picked. Like, like, God, just so you're aware, and we're on the same page, God, not only am I the last one to get picked, but if there's an odd number, I don't play. They don't even give me to another team. They're like, bro, you just bad. Don't worry about it. I'm the guy who gets left out, God. God, you've got the wrong guy. I want to tell you, in this season, focus makes a difference. If you focus on what you can do, man, you're going to be looking for toilet paper and hand sanitizer. You're going to be chasing, looking for things that, that, that just going to drive you crazy. But if you focus on what God can do through you during this season, he very well just may ignite, ignite an army and bring an army together and unite them in a way that we've never seen before. He may use this to spread the gospel in such a way we've never seen it. People have been praying for revival for years all across the globe. What if this pandemic is a moment that God starts to raise up the church because they get less focused on toilet paper and more focused on their neighbor? They become a little bit like Gideon and they let their uncertainty be met with the Holy Spirit and God begins to empower them like never before and they begin to do things that they've never done done before because God here's what I think I think I think what God said to Gideon he's saying to us let's look at what he says he says I'll I will be with you come on I need you can wherever you're at right now wherever you're at whatever's going on whether you're at home in your garage in your bedroom with your sheets up around your neck I need you to I want you to read this with me right now I will be with you you got your Bibles out, circle that, highlight that, draw a big arrow, because during seasons of uncertainty, you have to know that God is calling you, and not only is God calling you, he's saying, I will be with you. It's not about what you can do, it's about what he can do through you. And he says, and, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. He says, not only am I going to be with you when you go to war, I'm not, I, not only am I going to do something, I'm going to destroy them in a way that you could never imagine or hope. I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to do something big, but it starts with you knowing right here, I'm going to be with you. And when I'm with you, I'm going to fight the battle for you on your behalf. You just got to be faithful. Keep your focus right and show up. You see, it's God saying, I got you. Go. I got you. Go. And, and, and you see, here, here's what I begin to wrestle. When I begin to put all this together and I begin to, to wrestle this out, I begin to read chapter 7. You should go read chapter 7. Read chapter seven, I'm telling you, because here's what happens. 
Gideon's like, all right, God, I'm going to trust you. You got my back. You're with me. All of a sudden, Gideon goes to war against the Midianites. Gideon brings all the men together, and he, he, <laughs> he goes, God, we ain't got enough people. He said, oh, you got too many. We got to get rid of some people. Gideon's like, bro, you and I, we ain't playing the same game. When we get on the court for basketball, it's five on five, and right now we're at five on like two. He's like, how about we cut this down? He basically gets it down to where it's about five on one. And all of a sudden, Gideon goes, there's no way we can do this. And with 300 men, Gideon wins the war. And when you read that story, when you begin to hear that story, and you begin to wrap your mind around what God did, you see in our unknown situation, in our uncertainty, when we allow God to begin to call us into purpose and begin to serve those around us, all of a sudden what he begins to do is exponentially more than we could ever hope or dream. He begins to win a battle that we didn't even know we were fighting. Like, God, hey, I'm just showing up. I'm going to do what you ask me to do. And all of a sudden, God begins to bring a revival. Here's what I think's going on. I think God's trying to unite an army. I think he's trying to bring people together like he's never done before. And here's what I love about it. He's using the internet. He's using technology to get a message out to everyone. And he's saying, hey, it's time to raise up. It's time to be the church. You may not be meeting in a physical facility, but I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to unleash you. You're going to start liking and sharing things. People are going to, listen, last week, we had someone that has never been in the door of Decibel Church except Jesus Christ through the, the live broadcast. And I'm telling you right now, someone today in just a few minutes is going to surrender their life to Christ yet again. Why? because we're beginning to do more than we've ever done before. But I want to challenge you, because I'm telling you as your neighbor, I'm telling you as a man who's living in this world of uncertainty, I, I'm asking myself, how do we do this? I want to empower you. I want to give you one practical step to step into God's purpose during this season, where you can take your eyes off of you, off of your immediate surroundings, and you can just start putting them on God, where you start living a selfless life instead of a selfish life. It is so easy in the unknown to begin to live a selfish life. I want to give you one simple tool, one step this week that can really begin to change a city, maybe change a nation, maybe change the world. People all over the world are going to probably be watching this stream. So with that being said, here's the challenge. We have cards that are literally, it's a full sheet of paper. You're going to print it out on your printer. And on that, on that um, card, it says, hey, I'm your neighbor. I just want to help you and serve you. I can do that by, and you're going to fill in something like, hey, I can... I can pick up your groceries for you. I can watch your kids. I can mow your yard. I can, I can pick up your prescriptions for you. I can do whatever this task is that you want to do, I want you to do. And, and I want to tell you why. Because in a world where everyone's saying, social distance, social distancing. I don't think we need social distancing. I think we need physical distancing. Yes, we need to honor our authorities, and they're using the word social instead of physical. And I think that could have some huge implications. The word physical says, I need you to be six foot away, right? We don't want the virus to spread. But social distancing says, I'm going to lock myself in a room and not come out and talk to anybody. You see, we can be physically distant and socially distant socially active. And here's what I mean by that. You can go put a note on someone's door and they say, hey, text me how I can serve you. If I could just pick your groceries up this week, if I could just take your trash to the dump this week, let me know, text me. I would love to help you and serve you. Hey, and just so you know, this is an initiative of my church. Come check out the live stream. Because those people who would never walk through the door of a church, but because you took their trash to the dump or you pick their groceries up for them, or you watch their kids, or you mowed their yard, whatever that task, that simple, minute task may be to you and I. They click on a broadcast, and they say, hey, you know what, there's something different about these people. And I just want, here's what I want to challenge you to do. I want you to, I want to challenge you to take a picture when you leave the note on someone's door. Say, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. 
I'm all in on COVID-19. I'm all in. I'm all in on 2020, on COVID-19. I'm all in because I love people and I'm going to let God do more when, when the world's telling us to do less. I'm going to let God do more and step in. Here's what I realize. Love speaks the loudest when it costs the most. Love speaks the loudest when it costs the most. Understand that right now the world is expecting us to go into our bedrooms, shut the door, lock it, and act like we are lost in our bedrooms, never coming out. But God calls us to love in uncertain times. He calls us to be the church in uncertain times. He calls us out in the unknown. He, isn't it Peter that all of a sudden he says, hey, Peter, step out of the boat and walk on the water. You see, when the storms are raging, he calls people out of the boat to walk on water. And in this moment, we got to be people who are willing to step out of the boat, go put a note on someone's door or find a practical way to love them. Because right now, it will blow people's mind because everyone in the world is telling them to do the exact opposite. Go lock yourself in the closet. No, we, we are going to be people that we walk out our front door and we see the world around us. We may have physical distancing, but let me tell you something. We're going to be socially active. We're going to begin to reach out to our neighbor. We're going to begin to text them, call them, and do whatever it takes to see them just click on a broadcast. To hear a message of hope and know that we care deeply. Love speaks the loudest when it costs the most. Matter of fact, isn't that exactly what Jesus said in John 15, 13? Isn't that what Jesus said? Let's read John 15. It says, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is telling his disciples, he's saying, hey, I'm getting ready to go to the cross. I'm going to lay my life down for you. There's no greater love than a man to lay down his life for his friends. I'm going to tell you a weird story. I'm going to wrap this thing up if that's cool. Um, there are moments in my life I, I remember because people loved when there was no, in, there, there, there was no reason for them to love right? They, like it just, it didn't make sense. And one of those moments I was in McDonald's, come on, you know, when you go into McDonald's, you're not looking to hear it was, it, it's my pleasure. You're looking to say, you're just kind of looking to get your food and hope it's right. And, um, I was about 12 years old. It was my birthday. And, um, I got my two double cheeseburgers, ketchup only, large fry and a large drink. Come on, I'm going to supersize it and I'm going to drink them and eat them and I'm going to enjoy them. But somehow, that lady that was standing behind the counter caught that there was something going on in my life and she walked out to my table with a box of chocolate chip cookies. How many of y'all remember when when McDonald's had boxes of cookies, come on, chocolate chip boxed cookies. And she says, sir, she goes, there's just something about your day today. I want you to have a great day. And she set that box of cookies on my table. What she didn't know is that was my birthday. She had no idea of knowing it was my birthday. And I kept that box of cookies. And I said, you know what? That was one of the greatest symbols of love I've ever seen. Someone just simply gave me a box of cookies. I said, I'm going to keep that box of cookies. I'm going to give it to my wife on the day we get married. I'm going to tell her a story of unconditional love, how a lady just brought a box of McDonald's cookies to my table and how much it meant to me. And, you know, you can ask my wife if she got those cookies, but she never did because my three-year-old sister found them before I could give them to my wife, and she ate every one of them. I hope she listens to this broadcast. I hope she feels just, yeah, we'll just leave it at that, okay? But here's, here's what I want to ask you to do. If a simple box of chocolate chip cookies could mean so much to me, right? If it could mean so much to me at a season in life, can you imagine what it would be like if you just showed up and knocked on your neighbor's door and left a nice, warm batch of chocolate chip cookies there? 
Could you imagine what it would mean to your neighbor if you would just pick up a, their bags of trash and take them to the dump? Can you imagine what it would mean to your neighbor if you said, hey, I'm going to the store, do you need anything? And if I have to go to two stores just to get what you need, I'll go. What, what, how can I help you? How can I serve you? How, how do we do this right here? How do we step into the unknown? We begin to live lives that aren't centered around us. We begin to live lives that are centered around others. And we begin to find joy when we serve others. And we begin to walk into a new season of life with joy when everything else around us is uncertain and unknown. How are we gonna do this? We're gonna keep our focus on him and our focus on serving others. God's prescription, God's plan for us when we walk into the unknown and uncertain is for us simply to serve and love others others. We get our eyes off of ourselves. We live our lives for others. We begin to live our lives differently. We begin to experience life differently. So take the challenge. Download this little sheet. Print it off at your computer. Cut it up. Let your kids cut it up. They're at home anyway, right? Give them scissors and this is their project. Cut them up and go around and put them on your neighbor's doors. It just maybe one simple thing. Maybe that simple task that, that you could do is picking up the groceries, whatever it might be. Hey, you know what I'd love to do? We're going to put a post on Facebook. What are some ways we can serve our neighbor and just put up creative ideas, things we can do, and you fill in that blank with that answer, whatever one you can do. Let's be the church when everyone's expecting the church to crawl into to the, the bedroom and shut the door and act like we're not around. Let's speak the loudest. Love speaks the loudest when it costs us something. When everyone else is running, running to hide, we're gonna come out. We're gonna serve and love a city. Let's do that. I challenge you this week. Let's do that. Now, before I wrap up this broadcast, I just wanna give you a chance. Maybe you've sat in here with us and you've enjoyed the message and you've waved at someone on Facebook or something. I don't know. Maybe you're here today and God's just kind of stirring in your heart. There's something else that God wants to do in your life. There's, there's something else you're saying. There's something, there, 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 there's something going on in my soul. You see, the scriptures tell us that God begins to convince us or con convict us is kind of the spiritual word for that, that um, we need him in our lives. And the scriptures also tell us that if we admit that we've sinned, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess all that with our mouths, that we will be saved. You see, Jesus paid the price for your sins and mistakes and my sins and mistakes. And today what I want to do is I want to give you a chance to commit your life to Christ. The way we do that is we're just going to all, wherever we're at, bow our heads in just a moment. We're going to say a prayer. I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me wherever you're at. You say this prayer, you mean it in your heart, then you'll be a follower of Christ. So wherever you're at right now, just bow your heads, close your eyes. Maybe you're in your bedroom. Maybe you're in the couch in the living room. Maybe you're in the garage under the car. Just pause for a second. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and repeat after me. And if you're in a room with some other people, you're having a party watching this together. If you're a believer in Christ, I'm going to ask you to say this with me anyway. Because I don't want anyone who says this prayer out loud to be saying it alone. So wherever you're at, just repeat after me. Dear God, I'm sorry for the mistakes I've made and the sins I've committed. Would you please be my Lord? Be my Savior. Lead me into a growing relationship with you. Lord, show me and inspire me to love my neighbor well. Because I'm following you. And in the midst of the uncertain time, I want to step in to what you have for me. Amen. Now, very quickly on this broadcast, either on Facebook, there's going to be a link for you to click. If you said that prayer with me, I want you to click on that link and just let us know you said it. 
all you're gonna do is get an email from us, a response that lets you know, hey, A, we are celebrating with you, but B, right behind that, you're gonna get us some resources to just kind of help you start your relationship with Christ, grow in your relationship with Christ, and be encouraged in your relationship with Christ. I wanna tell you thank you for celebrating with us, and I just wanna challenge all of us as believers. This week, imagine what it would look like if the the 400 to 600 people that call Decibel Church home on a regular basis just went out and loved two neighbors. You just went out and two neighbors. Imagine what it would look like if we all loved the whole block. Come on. That, you, you remember how Gideon had 300 people and they won a battle that they couldn't win for seven years? You want me to tell you how we reach a city? We begin to serve and love a city in the midst of a pandemic we begin to reach out when no one else is willing to reach out. I want to thank you for joining us. And I'm telling you, I can't wait till next week, 1030 Sunday morning. We're going to take it up yet another notch. We look forward to worshiping with you. We will see you next Sunday. Here is Katie Rent. She's got a couple words for you. What a great message from Pastor Shame. I hope that message carries into this week and helps you with everything that is going on right now. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to another great online worship experience next Sunday. Have a great week.